we're doing another Samsara video here. This one's gonna focus on the hours of service section of Samsara. It's gonna be our longest video here because it's the most robust thing that you do in Samsara. It's the only reason we need Samsara is because of the ELDs. So we're gonna cover a lot of information. Some of the information we're gonna break up and cover in different videos to go into more detail, but we're gonna go through a brief overview here so that you feel like you have the basic idea and you can look at some of our other videos if you want some more detailed information. So beginning, we went into the hours of service and we're just gonna go top down here, go in what each feature is and make sure you understand it and that you're comfortable with it. You've got settings up here. You can change if you want split sleeper toggle on or off. You definitely want that on. I can't see any reason why you wouldn't want it on. So just make sure it's on. Starting at the top, changing duty status. You can see I'm off duty right now. This is really straightforward. If you wanna change your duty status, you simply just click on any one of these and change it, save it. You can add remarks. There's preloaded things in here, which is nice, or you can type whatever you want to type. Now, when it comes to driving, once you are connected to a vehicle and you start driving, it's gonna put you in drive mode automatically. So you don't need to worry about switching to driving. When you stop, it's not gonna switch you out of driving right away. It's gonna wait five minutes. Once you've been stopped for five minutes, then it will put you back in on duty. However, I recommend that anytime you stop, you just look at your log and you change it to whatever you want it to be. The drivers who don't do that, and they let the logbook kind of do the switching for them, they end up with a lot of on-duty time, which eats up your 70 hour clock, and then you lose hours on your week. So take control of it, and then you'll be able to get more hours. You can see at the bottom, we have personal conveyance and yard move enabled. Now I'm not gonna go into the details of the when, why, how to use all this. I'm gonna make a separate video for that because that's a long explanation. So look up that video if you wanna know some of that. But I'll just point out that if you do choose any of these duty statuses, you have to type a specific remark as to why you wanna use these special things. So I'm gonna back out of here. The next thing down is our blue squares. On our blue squares, it just tells us how much time we've got on our clock. And if you were to start driving, it would switch to a drive mode where it just counts down for you so you don't have to focus on all this other information. I can go into rest mode in here, which when you're on your 10 hours off or whatever, it tells you how much time until you're gonna get hours back, kind of nice. That's what the blue circles do for you. Next thing down here is available tomorrow. This is just telling me how many hours I'll get back tomorrow if I was running on my recap. So if you're running recap, watch for that. Below that, there's this log button. All that does is take you to today's log. We'll get to that a little bit later. Next to it is roadside. We're gonna click on roadside. This is where you go if you're going to get a roadside inspection at a port or from an officer on the side of the road. It's very important to know how this works because if you don't know, you can get a violation just by not knowing. First thing it asks for is if you wanna create a special pin. This pin is used so that, say you're getting an inspection and you don't want the officer snooping around in other parts of your phone. I don't worry about that, so I just skip it. I do continue without lock. Now the officer could just look at your logs here, but what's proper is that they will have you send them your logs. So there's two things you really need to know at this point. The first thing is you need to know where is your DOT quick reference card, the instructions for your logbook. If you if they ask for that and you don't have it, that's a violation. So ELD and CAD materials here at the top, DOT English, here's the instruction sheet. Make sure you know where this is. We don't put them in the registration books because they keep an updated digital version in here and I think that's better. The second thing you have to know is how do you transfer your logs to the officer? So you hit the transfer button up here in the top right. You're gonna click on wireless web services. The officer would have some unique number, say it's AR25. And then you would hit transfer and that would send the logs through the ERod system. That's how you send it. Make sure you're familiar with that. Okay, that's everything and how you send it. It's really simple, but it's important. Make sure you know it. As I continue on down, this just has each of my individual days and it's gonna show me the information for each of those days. I'm gonna go into today's log and show you. So here I have my grid that we're more familiar with seeing when it comes to log books. Below that, I have my trailer and shipping IDs. What I wanna point out here is every single day you must have a trailer and shipping ID on your log if you had any sort of drive time. If you don't, it is a violation. And it's a dumb violation because all it is is making sure there's a number there. And that's it, it's that simple. So if you happen to realize you forgot it one day, go back and update that by coming in here and clicking on it and entering the information. Super simple thing, don't miss that. 
Now, if you've certified your logs, you're not gonna be able to change any of these numbers. You'll have to call the office and they can change it for you. Scrolling down below that, you see my duty status is that it's recording. What's nice here is you can make edits if you realize you messed up on something. So I come in here, I can say, okay, I can change these times up here, but you usually don't need to because it automatically selects the time period that you picked that you wanted to change. I can change it to whatever I want it to be. I have to put in a remark as to why I was doing a change, and then I hit save and then it will change it up on my log. Hard to see because it was such a small time period, but you can see that it's reflected down here in the duty statuses. Again, if you've certified your logs, you can't make any changes here. You will have to call the office. They'll make the changes that'll ask for your approval. If you need to edit drive time, you can never edit drive time. Only the office can make those changes. Now, in your duty statuses, there are exemptions. And I didn't mention exemptions before when we were talking about duty statuses because you don't do them up in that top section. You have to do them in the individual day. We have the 16 hour short haul and we have the adverse driving conditions. These are really helpful. 16 hour short haul can be used if you're staying local and if you have a day where you need to go over your 14. It doesn't allow you to go over your 11, but it'll allow you to go over your 14. You can use that once in your 70 hour uh, week, you know, once a week. So you come in here, you apply for time, you choose a time, and then it will give that to you. Same with adverse driving. You can use adverse driving for a lot of things. For instance, an unforeseen snowstorm, or just the snowstorm was a lot worse than it was forecasted to be. Or you run into construction and traffic that you weren't expecting to run into. Any of that stuff that is unforeseen, that you couldn't have known was gonna happen, or not reasonably known, you can use it for, and it will give you more time. This one will also give you more drive time. And so be very careful how you use it though, because if you use it and abuse it, you're gonna get in trouble and then you'll get a violation and could get shut down anyways. We can cover more about that another time, but that's how you apply it. Okay, you can also certify and submit your log for the day. I mentioned that um, in my logging in and out video. Or if you need to certify a whole bunch at once, just go to the log out button and log out and you can certify an entire week or an entire year if you needed to. Well, you only have six months, so an entire six months. But if you wanna certify one log at a time, you come in and select it there. That's a general overview of hours of service. That's everything it can do, all the ins and outs of it. Like I mentioned, there's some specific functions that I'll cover, such as PC and yard move in a separate video. But now you know the general over idea how it works. Well, I hope you found this video really helpful. If you want to, click right down in here. This is the subscribe button. That'll give you more of our helpful videos. And then after that, come over here and click here for more of our videos. Remember, truck drivers are American heroes. Let's make truck drivers great again and keep on trucking.